folks, it's Chris Gordon here, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the line that I just played, um, Ascending Only Today. I'll talk about the Descending version another time, but this came from a Scott McGill clip uh, that is available on YouTube, and I'm going to leave the link to that in the description, and uh, please check it out, because Scott gets into so much depth on this idea and I'm only really here to show you what I took from it initially. Again, uh, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Any single clip from Scott McGill can send you to the woodshed for a year. Uh, and that's a beautiful thing. So I uh, want to suggest to you to please check out that uh, clip and all of his other ones, because he gets into so much depth with it. And he also gets into the theoretical depth of it, too, which I'm not going to do in this video. I'm going to show you what I initially took from it. So what it was initially, just to give you a little background on it, was it was Scott's t uh, take on the Slominski pattern number six. And if you were are familiar with that literature, the uh, examples are all in C. Scott moved it to A because it was from a Schoenberg uh, piece. And just to give you a quick example, I'm going to adjust the camera here. Uh, this is what the actual line started out as. Right? A, B flat, C, E flat, E, G flat. And then it just transverses through octaves. Okay? So what Scott talked about was taking off the first note, the A, and starting from B, flat. So we have B flat, C, E flat, E natural, G flat. That was the line. And then he talked about moving it in minor thirds, which is where I took it and, and did my thing with it. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few things that I'm doing with this. The first thing is, is I just got the fingering down, moving it in minor thirds right on up. So it was really fun because it's patterns of five, which most of my students will tell you I love dearly. I love patterns of five. Now you're hearing the snap, which is another thing that um, I got from Scott. Uh, if you listen to Scott's playing, he has an amazing plectrum technique where he'll snap these notes. And I've heard um, I've heard uh, Sean Lane use this technique. Um, I was exposed to it a, a little earlier on in, in, in listening to Scott way back in the day. So. Um, that's what kind of inspired this idea was, I was like, let me take the initial thought behind this and then work on uh, the snapping the technique, which is something I use a lot in my phrasing and my improvisation. This is not an improvisational thing. This is an isolated idea that I use to warm up on and uh, work on moving throughout the neck. So again, let me uh, refresh the notes. B flat, C natural, E flat, E and G flat. Okay, so it is pattern six without the A. We're taking that out of the equation. Then I just move it up a minor third. Another minor third, which will actually be an augmented fourth or a flat fifth from the from the from the beginning. So I'm I I don't mean to jump around. So let me let me uh, stay with this idea for a minute. So here we are. When I move this up a minor third, I have a D flat, an E flat, a G flat, a G natural, and an A. I tend to refer to everything in flats. So um, and harmonically, obviously, that's an F sharp. But I'm hearing it and seeing it as a G flat. Now, the next thing may or may not be of any use to you, and it's the way I'm picking it. Uh, usually in, in odd groupings of notes, sometimes it's, you know, better just to kind of use alternate picking. 
that's not really my go-to. I'm more of an economy picker, uh, which is great, but it also presents some interesting issues, which you're gonna, you're about to see. So I'm going to talk about the way I'm picking this, and I'll adjust the camera. Again, this may or may not be of any use to you uh, in terms of the way I'm picking it. So I start the B flat with an upstroke, downstroke on the C, down on the E flat, up on the E, down on the G flat. So the reason I'm doing that is to get that snap on that last note of the sequence. And that's a rest stroke. I'm actually coming to rest on the D string there. Now when I shift to the next position, which in this case is D flat, it's the same pattern fingering wise, the same shape, right? But this is where things get a little inconvenient <laughs> and not as efficient as uh, economy picking would be because I'm coming from this down, shifting, and then starting with an up. But I'm also doing something a little in, uh, different here too. That up, as you can see, is also a rest stroke, and I'm taking advantage of my extended range. Now I understand that most of us would be playing this on a six string, so um, I, I'm not sure how that would work out, but it doesn't matter. You can still just pick that up. So I'm starting with the same picking direction, the same picking pattern that I did on the first one. Up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Again, not super efficient. But it's just the way I naturally go. So I'm not saying that that's the way you should do it. But, but I'm getting that snap on the second pattern as well. Next pattern is on the uh, off of the A string, which is now E, G flat, A. There's that A we were missing, right? Now it's back. A, B flat, and C. Another minor third up, G, A. There's that A again. C, uh, D flat, and E flat. So the fingering is the same. You see that? And again, my purpose is to, you know, work on that snap kind of idea. But anyway. Now, the situation with with that kind of bizarre going from this kind of rested downstroke to this rested upstroke, I'm using that to my advantage in the sense that it almost sounds dotted. This lobbing effect, which is intentional. Okay. Now, at this point, I've covered everything. And at this point, I'm just working in octaves. That's the same as where I started, just an octave higher. Right? Okay, so that's B flat, C, E flat, E, G flat, just like we started with. A minor third above that, D flat, E flat, G flat, G, and A. Okay. Gets interesting here. <laughs> now I'm going to the third string, which is G. Now the trans, the, the transversion, I don't know if that's a word, uh, it, between uh, the G string and the B string is because they're tuned in thirds. It's going to be a shift here. E, G flat, A, B flat, and C. You want to get used to that. I might even just isolate that. And of course, then I move up a minor third. It's going to do the same thing. So I get this. So I spent some time isolating that to get used to that shift. Okay? So with E, G flat, A, B flat, C, G, A, C, D flat, E flat. Okay? Now the final approach on the ascending is on the B and E string. I got this B flat. I'm back to the same shape I had, B flat, C. I can stay without having to shift, E flat, G, 
I'm mean, sorry, E and G flat. Move that up a minor third, D flat, E flat, G flat, G and A. So there you have it. Just kind of bringing this up. And then I might top it off with that B flat at the top, okay? Which is the root, well, the root of this particular idea. Have it right so then I'm just coming right on up so uh, the concept was using the same picking pattern for every cell of every five note pattern okay. and that's what I used as my uh, kind of a, a really in, uh, warm up that I like to use with that kind of technique um, you can look at that as patterns of five or you can group them into patterns of 10, which takes an odd grouping into an even grouping, because, you know, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? Technically, 10 is an even number. So that's another way you can think of it if you, if you choose to. And there we have the ascending version of this... Uh, Slomisky pattern shaving off the A from the top and making it a five note pattern. Anyway, so um, I will be back with the descending version and some variations on that descending version and also how I resolve it, uh, which is another topic. Uh, again, I please check out Scott's video, which is in the description below, where he gets very much more in depth into its applications and its theory. And he is definitely the man to do that. So thank you, Scott, for the inspiration behind this uh, idea. And uh, I do use it every day. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions or ideas. All right, have a good one. Thank you.